I'm here at DSEI joined by Jim Cannon, Chief Executive Officer of FLIR, who's going to talk to us about some of the long-term plans of FLIR, especially the acquisitions that have taken place recently. So Jim, could you explain a bit more to me about the acquisitions and why they're important to the long-term plans? Absolutely. At FLIR Systems, we've long been known for infrared technologies. Indeed, our name is Forward Looking Infrared. But we're evolving from a sensor company to more and more of a decision support company. All of our sensors are intended to gather information to help our soldiers be more lethal and survivable on the battlefield. And more and more they are used in unmanned systems and it really began when we invented the world's smallest infrared camera. And we coupled that with the world's smallest nano, battle proven nano drone in the Black Hornet. So at a little over 50 grams, it can fly for two kilometers, it can loiter for 20 minutes, fly in gusting winds, and really change the tactics and techniques and procedures of our warfighters. So from the Black Hornet, we wanted to have a suite of capabilities using our infrared sensors as well as a wide range of Seaburney sensors for both air and ground unmanned applications and manned unmanned teaming. So that went from the acquisition of Prox Dynamics with the Black Hornet, followed by the acquisition of Arion Labs, where we got access to the Sky Ranger and Sky Raider that's got a much more uh, robust payload capability at four and a half or five pounds, can carry a wide range of different sensing capabilities. But with the airborne unmanned applications, we also wanted to have ground unmanned capability. So soon after the acquisition of Arion Labs in the first quarter of 2019, we also acquired Endeavor Robotics, a spin out of iRobot Defense, now a part of FLIR Unmanned and Integrated Systems. And that gives us solutions like the First Look, which is a throwable robot that you could throw onto a roof, into a culvert, into a sub-T environment or the SUG-V, or the pack bot that could be used for EOD applications or other Seabrini reconnaissance, all the way up to the Cobra, which is a quite large robot that can be used to deal with vehicle-borne IEDs, weighing over 700 pounds, carrying a wide range of sensors, and with the ability to rip the doors off a vehicle and interrogate a potential threat. So this is an important part of our evolution from being a sensor-centric company to more and more of a solution and decision support company to help professionals make better informed decisions quicker to save lives and livelihood. Well, we're incredibly vertically integrated. So whether it's infrared cameras and sensors, chemical, radiological, biological, nuclear, or explosive detecting technology, uh, even when we think about our traditional airborne products that might go on a helicopter or search and rescue aircraft, uh, we're so vertically integrated, we actually grow the crystals that we cut and polish into the lasers that we put into our laser range finders or laser target designation uh, systems. So for the size company that we are, uh, we are really proud of the amount of vertical integration that we're able to deliver. And could you tell me um, about the DARPA um, subterranean challenge? I know a number of your systems have been involved in that and that's been ongoing quite, quite recently. Well, Sub-T is a, a unique environment for our warfighter to go into. Uh, obviously very dangerous, a lot of unknowns, uh, can be contaminated, there can be all sorts of different non-traditional agents or toxins or uh, biological agents that they're going to have to deal with. You're fighting in a GPS denied environment, you know, in a deep and hardened target. So, you know, we participated along with many others in the DARPA Sub-T program. Uh, we were able to then uh, have a successful conclusion with some of our Endeavor, now FLIR, unmanned ground system. And we're working to build from that, not just a Sug V or Pat Bach with a first look, but how could you incorporate Black Hornets as well or other unmanned systems that can go out and face what is arguably one of the most complex battle spaces that our customers are going to face. And what about the future for FLIR? What, what are the next steps? What do you see um, the next 10 years bringing for you? Oh, a lot. I mean, in, in, in only the past two years, so much has changed. What I'm most excited about now 
is technology is able to catch up with the mission sets or capabilities that are desired and it's really going to change tactics, techniques and procedures of our customers. If we go back to the Black Hornet, uh, there's a lot more work that we can do to make a more capable sensor payload, to have different payloads, to have a vehicle reconnaissance solution so that you can stay mounted in your vehicle while you deploy a swarm of these. And you know, the fundamental premise of ground combat is to make contact with your smallest possible element. Still in many cases, that's an individual soldier with a rifle. But with this, that dynamic changes completely. So we see a whole host of solutions on the battlefield that manned on man teaming, but more importantly, what software, machine learning, video analytics, artificial intelligence can bring. The sensor now can overwhelm the soldier with information. So more and more, we want to take away those low order tasks. The work, for example, in an assembly area, when you need to do maintenance on your vehicle, get rest and eat, but yet you still got to pull security. A tethered drone with the right sensor that can tell the difference between a deer, a human, or a human that's armed moving on your position and alarm the warfighter is a way that we can have them focused on the most value-added tasks and we can have tools like this take some of those low order tasks away from that soldier because it's so fatiguing and more and more smaller units have to do bigger missions. And these are now operational, I believe, for the U.S. Army. These have been uh, in battle with over 26 different allied nations, with various uh, special forces organizations around the world. We're really proud that this year we won a program called the Soldier Born System, and it endeavors to place a Black Hornet system in, in all the rifle squads in the U.S. Army. So the 3rd Brigade Combat Team of the 82nd Airborne deployed to Afghanistan this summer with the Black Hornet, uh, and we're real keen to get feedback from the field as they learn to develop their tactics uh, with this technology in hand. Thank you ever so much, Jim, for speaking to me today. It's been hugely appreciated. Thank you. Thank you for your time.